today's topic is protein biosynthesis translation in this topic i'm going to tell about three important contents that is first one four steps involved in translation process and second one post translational modifications and third one inhibitors of protein synthesis there are three important procedures processes which are involved in the protein synthesis process replication transcription and translation process in which replication and transcription process will be occurred in nucleus whereas in case of translation it is occurred in cytoplasm in the replication process two daughter dna molecules will be obtained from the parental dna molecules in the nucleus and in the in case of transcription here dna information the genetic information of dna so which is copied to mrna and that information will be useful for the protein synthesis and this transcription part also will be occurred in nucleus only and the third one is translation so this is the main part of protein synthesis here uh, the decoding of genetic information of mrna will be occurred and finally we are forming a protein part in the cytoplasm and now we are going to discuss about the translation the translation is the process so by which we can decoding the mrna genetic information uh, to produce or uh, to synthesize the protein part so which is occurred in cytoplasm and here ribosomes are very much important for the preparation of proteins generally we are having two uh, ribosomal subunits smaller subunit and larger subunit so these two subunits are involved in the process of protein synthesis here in this translation process we can we have to see uh, four important stages so first stage is called to be activation of amino acids second stage initiation of protein synthesis third stage elongation of protein synthesis and fourth stage termination of protein synthesis the first stage activation of amino acid here generally activation of amino acid is required why because amino acids are initially inactivated in form so which are present in cytosol and these amino acids will not be useful for the formation of protein synthesis so so these amino acids will be activated by taking some energy in the form of atp and it is uh, then it is attached with the trna and forming amino acyl trna complex so here this is the amino acyl trna complex which is having amino acid and trna and uh, this reaction is favored in the presence of this enzyme that is amino acyl trna synthetase and here finally the amino acid will be activated initially the amino acid which is present in cytosol which is in inactivated form now it is attached to the trna now it is activated form now this amino acid is ready for the formation of protein synthesis and the second stage is called to be initiation so this initiation step will be again divided into four important steps the first step is called to be ribosomal dissociation second step is formation of 43 pre initiation complex step 3 is formation of 48s initiation complex and step 4 is formation of 80s initiation complex in all steps there are certain important factors will be involved for continuing these processes so we can see all the factors which are involved in this initiation process will be seen in this later slides and the first step of initiation process that is ribosomal dissociation here ribosomes will be dissociated in eukaryotes so we are having ads ribosomes so this ads ribosomes which are having two sub parts so one larger sub unit that is called 60s and smaller sub unit that is called 40s so these two are combined with these two are binded each other and forming ads ribosomes in eukaryotes 
whereas in case of prokaryotes so which are having 70s ribosomes 50s of large subunit and 30s of small subunit is present but here in this step ribosomal dissociation here these two subunits will be dissociated in the presence of these factors factor 3 and factor 1a so which are involved due to presence of these factors here ribosomal subunits will be divided or dissociated this is the first step of initiation step in the second step here we are forming a 43 years pre-initiation complex after dividing of these ribosomal subunits here the uh, amino acyl tRNA will be added in the presence of uh, elongation factor one so here one more factor is added so due to presence of this factor here amino acyl tRNA will be added to the 40s ribosomal subunit now it is converting into 43s pre-initiation complex the pre-initiation complex is having three subunits four subunits subunit one two three and one a along with trna and amino acid including gtp and the next step is called to be formation of 48s initiation complex so so we have already seen that 43s pre-initiation complex is formed already and here mrna is not included so in this step here mrna will be included but here mrna initially is inactivated form now after adding of few important factors this mrna will be activated here four of factor will be added at the five prime region so which is a cap region and this 4F factor, which is having three associated factors like 4G, 4A, and 4E, and finally associated and forming 4F factor, so which is attached at 5' region. So, here for this process, it requires one ATP molecule. It consumes some energy, and it here 4F molecules will be attached at the 5' region. In the next second step, 4A, 4B. These also factors which are involved, which are added to the mRNA molecule. But here at the three prime region, here 4A and 4B molecules will be attached. So that means at five prime region, 4F factor will be attached and 4A, 4B factors will be attached at three prime region. In between these two factors, AUG, will be present so which is a genetic code for methionine which is a start codon here now this mRNA will be activated now this mRNA is ready to complex with 43s pre-initiation complex but here so before directly joining here 43 pre-initiation complex will be screening the mRNA and this complex will be identifying the sequence which is a start sequence. Here the start sequence is AUG, methionine. So AUG is code for methionine, amino acid. Now, here this 43 pre-initiation complex will be attached at this start codon region. Now the 43S pre-initiation complex is converting into 43S initiation complex. The difference between these two complexes will be these three factors including mRNA and now this 43s initiation complex is converting into 48s initiation complex by releasing of these three factors like 4f 4a and 4b so why because these factors will be useful for activating mRNA for attaching with 43 pre-initiation complex but after attaching with pre-initiation complex the requirement of these factors are not present so that's why these factors will be released now the complex is converting into 48s initiation complex in the next step the formation of ats initiation complex now 
In the previous slide, we have seen that 48 years pre-initiation complex, so which is released these four factors, factor one, two, three, and one A, along with GDP. Here, this 48 years pre-initiation complex will be ready for taking 60 years a larger subunit of ribosome. For attaching this larger subunit of ribosome at 40 years region, it requires elongation factor 5. Here also one GTP molecule is involved. Here also this association is also required some energy. So GTP will be providing that energy in the presence of elongation factor 5. 60S molecule, 60S larger subunit of ribosome will be attaching with the 40S. And finally, it is forming 80S initiation complex, which is having 40S subunit and 60S subunit. Here, 60S subunit is having two important sites. So one site is called A site, which is called the acceptor site here. Here, amino acids will be accepted at this region. And the second site is called to be P site. P site means peptidyl site. Here, peptidyl linkage, peptide linkage will be forming at this region. So that's why this is called to be P site. And the next stage, this is the third stage, elongation. The elongation is again, divided into three important steps. The first step is called binding of next amino acyl tRNA to the A site of ribosome. In step two, formation of peptide bonds. In step three, translocation. In the previous slide, here ATS initiation complex is formed, which is having only one amino acid. But for preparing a protein or a polypeptide chain, it requires many amino acids. So, many number of amino acids will be accepting at this A site and after that, these amino acid must be forming a peptide linkage with methionine and forming a long chain polypeptide chain. Then this long chain polypeptide chain must be translocated. So these three important processes will be occurred in elongation stage. This is the first step of elongation stage, binding of next amino acyl tRNA to A site of ribosome. So this is the ATS initiation complex. So we have seen in the previous slide. And here at this A site, acceptor site, and one more amino acid will be accepted here at this site. Here a valine, a tRNA along with valine will be accepted at A site. For accepting this amino acid, a new amino acid, it requires a factor that is called elongation factor one alpha. And also it requires GTP molecule. And now after accepting here, these two um, amino acyl tRNAs will be attached at P site and A site. At P site, methionine is present. At A site, valine is present. But these two amino acids are not bounded. There is no peptide linkage in between. So now the peptidyl transferase enzyme will be involved to form a linkage between these two amino acids. So this enzyme will be useful for the formation of peptide bond. And after formation of peptide bond, so this methionine will be shifted here. So this is called translocation. So for this translocation, so it requires EF2, that is elongation factor two is required for the translocation part. And finally here, these two uh, polypeptide chains will be translocated from one tRNA to another tRNA. So this is about the binding of next amino acid tRNA to A site of ribozyme. In the next step, see this is the polypeptide bond which is formed in between two amino acids. So this is one amino acid and this is another amino acid here. A polypeptide chain will be forming. 
and after forming a polypeptide chain here this complete amino acid sequence will be shifted here this is called translocation in the uh, here in the presence of ef2 the translocation process will be occurred and this is the final products here the complete a site will be filled with amino acid sequence a polypeptide chain p site so doesn't have any amino acid so this tRNA so will be uh, will be released from the p site in the next in the next process so this is the termination process here the polypeptide chain will be terminated a linear polypeptide chain will be terminated for terminating this polypeptide chain it requires also one factor that is rf1 factor will be involved so when this rs factor will be involved at this a site here the polypeptide chain will be broken and it is released into the cytosol in the same way here the trna also will be released into cytosol and also these subunits ribosomal subunits also will be divided from the mrna so these are the these are these are all um, are mainly due to rf1 factor this rf1 factor will be added so when we get the stop codons like uag etc so due to presence of these stop codons here rf factor will be involved in this termination process and finally the polypeptide chain will be released in the next slide here we are going to discuss about post translational modifications after formation of a linear chain polypeptide here which is which is present in the cytosol the linear chain polypeptide is very inactive in nature so this inactivated linear polypeptide chain must be activated so due to presence of chaperons here the chaperons of the specially specialized proteins so which are useful for the folding of the proteins so that means a linear chain polypeptide chain is converting into a folded protein chains the folded protein chains are having activation sites so that's why this protein is called to be activated protein and this act after formation of activated protein and it undergoes enzymatic reactions that means it has activation sites so at these sites substrates will be attached and forming enzyme substrate complexes so this enzyme substrate complexes will be useful for the formation of the final products these are the post translational modifications in this process a linear chain polypeptide will be converting into a folded chain polypeptide which is in activated form and then it goes enzymatic reactions these are the these are the some important uh, post translational modifications like amino amino terminal modifications loss of signal sequence covalent modifications of proteins proteolytic processes so by this all processes here the linear chain polypeptide will be converting into a folding polypeptide chain activated form these are all called to be post translational modifications in the next slide here we are going to discuss about uh, inhibitors of protein synthesis the protein synthesis will be inhibited by a variety of antibiotics like streptomycin tetracycline chloramphenicol and erythromycin here streptomycin and tetracycline will be bounding at uh, the ts subunit region of ribosomes and chloramphenicol erythromycin will be binding at 50s subunit of ribosomal ribosomes but here in streptomycin here which inhibits the chain elongation at site a at site a that is acceptor site amino acyl trna will be accepted here after accepting this amino acid amino acid at a site so these amino acids are forming a polypeptide chain 
with uh, uh, with uh, with other amino acid which is present in in p site and translocation will be occurred but this entire process is called to be elongation this entire process will be inhibited so why because here the streptomycin will be binding will be inhibiting the e site and tetracycline will be inhibiting the p site so what p site will be giving the p site will be useful for binding of amino acid trna the initial process will be inhibited by tetracycline and chloramphenicol so which is binding at 50s ribosomal subunit and which blocks the peptidyl transferase reaction the peptidyl transferase reaction so will be useful for formation of peptide bonds between two amino acids so peptide bondage will be inhibited so by this chloramphenicol and erythromycin is also binding at 50s ribosomal unit which inhibits the translocation reaction that means a polypeptide chain will be translocated from p site to a site so the entire process will be inhibited by erythromycin so these are the important inhibitors of protein synthesis so this is the end of this topic thank you